Lori Markkinen is a seriously underrated talent. Here's a guy who this season had a higher field goal percentage than Luka Doncic, makes more threes a game than James Harden, and averages more points than Jokic, but just a few years ago was a bench warmer in Chicago. And it's not like these are unusual numbers. The seven foot Finn burst onto the scene back in 2017, breaking records, dazzling defenses, and scoring at will with a silky smooth jump shot. But while today, Markkanen is the first Nordic All-Star in NBA history and winner of the Most Improved Player Award. His time in the league hasn't always been so fruitful. Bad GMs, difficulties adapting his game, and injury woes have all done their part to slow down Markkanen's impact on the court. But to really understand how a seven-footer who averages more threes than LeBron and AD combined was once benched and traded on a free agency, we need to take a good look at the evolution of Laurie Markkanen. Before making his NBA debut, Markkanen was just a high schooler from Vanta, Finland, training at the prestigious Helsinki Basketball Academy. He showed early promise, impressing coaches with his technical ability, dedication, and discipline. Despite his tall frame, Markkanen started out as a perimeter player, using his height to get above smaller defenders in the wings. But things changed when the assistant head coach stepped in. Hanno Motola, the first Finnish to ever play in the NBA, saw potential in Markkanen and helped the young Finn to develop his game further. Motola worked with Markkanen on his shooting mechanics and taught the high schooler how to play low in the post. Despite his obvious talent and large frame, Madala was hesitant to make any NBA commitments too soon. He instead pushed the young Finn to attend college to see how his play style fared. Markkanen attended the University of Arizona and in his first and only season playing for the Wildcats, averaged 20.2 points, 9.3 rebounds, and an impressive 42.2% from the three-point line. He was a confident scorer, able to throw it down in the paint and pull up with the jumper from just about anywhere. Defensively, he shined, using a seven-foot frame to secure rebounds and make game-changing blocks. After being selected third-team All-American and first-team All-Pac-12 in his freshman year, Markkanen decided he was ready to take his game to the next level. Waiving his remaining three years of college, he announced his intention to declare for the 2017 NBA Draft. For most players, your first year in the league is a tough one. The pace, rhythm, and intensity of the game changes almost overnight, and it can take players years to really find their footing and get comfortable balling out. Markkanen only needed a month. In his debut game against the Toronto Raptors, Markkanen scored 17 points in 33 minutes, beating his old mentor, Madala's NBA career high of 14 on his first night on the court. Before the month was over, Markkanen broke his first NBA record, most three-pointers made in the first three games of an NBA career, draining 10 threes like it was nothing. The league quickly took notice of the seven-foot sniper. To really understand how special Markkanen was in his rookie year, you've got to understand the state of the game back in 2017. Well, today, players like Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama make being a seven-foot shooter look normal. Things weren't always like this. Despite the importance of the three-point shot, most NBA bigs lacked any distance and consistency to their shooting. Dirk Nowitzki was probably the only seven-footer who could comfortably sink anything from distance, and that ability helped turn the German giant into an NBA legend. So what about Markkanen? Well, he continued to impress in his rookie season, securing a career-high 33 points against the Knicks, followed by a career-high 17 rebounds against New Orleans. He also joined Dirk as the second-ever player over seven feet to score eight three-pointers in a game. By the end of the season, Markkanen became the highest scoring Finnish born player in NBA history, dethroning his mentor back home in just his first season. He was named on the NBA All Rookie First Team and was the leading rebounder on the Bulls. Expectations were high for the finisher, and with the Bulls in serious need of a rebuild, his arrival couldn't have come at a better time. Chicago now had a young core of talent, and someone like Markkanen seemed like the perfect centerpiece to build around. Except, that's not what Bulls head coach Jim Boylan thought. Boylan was criticized for his inability to develop young talent, something Markkanen experienced firsthand. Things got so bad, players on the Bulls even threatened to boycott practice after one of Boylan's tough guy decisions went too far. Markkanen admitted to being involved in the discussions about boycotting the practice, but was later persuaded to change his mind by a more senior player who reminded the youngsters how a decision like this could affect their future in the league. 
The Finn was no doubt frustrated by a head coach who frequently used the seven-footer in weird ways, putting him in strange rotations and roster configurations that did not make the most of his skill set. To make matters worse, Markkanen missed a good portion of his second season due to injuries, only managing to play 52 games. But when he did play, he proved he could still be a dominant force. He would finish the season first overall in rebounds and third in scoring. Before Markkanen's third season in Chicago, the organization went through major changes. Jim Boylan was fired and the Bulls front office was overhauled. Many fans hoped this change in coaching staff would help Markkanen's game evolve even further, but boy were they wrong. Nobody really knows what, but it was clear that something had happened to Markkanen's game. Maybe it was the recent injury scares or something in the locker room, but the once dangerous and confident center looked deflated. In his third season as a Bull, he had become less agile, less aggressive, and his defensive stats dropped significantly. Fans also noticed he had less energy off the ball, and after Chicago dropped Vucevic, it was obvious the organization had lost confidence in their Finnish big man. Markkanen would spend the rest of his time at the Bulls coming off the bench, and the Finn looked visibly unhappy sitting courtside. In his first three years in the NBA, Markkanen had done what every Hooper dreads. He had evolved backwards. He soon found himself traded off to the Cleveland Cavaliers, who were in serious need of an outside shooter, something Markkanen, thankfully, could still do. In his debut, he netted 10 points and 9 rebounds in a loss against the Grizzlies, and struggled to find similar levels of success like he had in Chicago. He got his starting role back, but his efficiency, shooting percentage, and overall impact took a noticeable dip. Markkanen again found himself on a team that wasn't right for him. Because of the Cavs' many big men like Evan Mobley, Garrett Allen, and Kevin Love, Markkanen found himself starting at the three position as a seven-footer. Questions about Markkanen's inability to adapt and evolve his game began to spring up. Maybe he'd hit a ceiling, and those early flashes of greatness we'd seen in Chicago would just be that, flashes. Despite a rough year for the Finn, he was able to record career-high defensive stats with the Cavs and help them finish 8th in the Eastern Conference, a notable improvement on their 13th place the year before. After only a year, Markkanen was traded to the Utah Jazz for Donovan Mitchell, and it seemed like the 7-foot Finn was going to become one of those players who gets traded around the league, never settling, and eventually being forced to retire when he could no longer provide any value. But Markkanen's move to the Jazz wasn't that. In fact, the move was exactly what he needed to revive his career. The Markkanen we'd watched getting benched in Chicago and struggling to make an impact in Cleveland was now back to lighting up the court. Against the Suns, he scored 38 points on 15 of 18 shooting from the field and recorded a career high of 49 points and 8 rebounds against the Houston Rockets. Markkanen's game was once again elite. He was scoring at will, he'd improved his efficiency and overhauled himself defensively to the point where the Finn was selected as an NBA All-Star. Just to be clear, this isn't normal. It's rare to see a player struggle so much only to dramatically turn it around only a season later. Veteran point guard Jordan Clarkson played a role in Markkanen's resurgence because Markkanen now had someone carrying the rock who knows how to make the most of a scoring big. Markkanen finished this season as the points and rebound leader for the Jazz. He's young, super talented, and is now surrounded by a squad that complements the aggressive seven-footers attacking style of play. In April, Markkanen was named as the NBA's most improved player over the likes of Shai Gilgeous Alexander and Jalen Brunson a well-deserved accolade. From his early days balling out in Chicago to bench riding and a major slump in form, Markkanen's NBA journey has definitely had its ups and downs, but his new all-star form is what fans and the league had expected from the Finnish sniper since draft night. Hopefully, this is a sign that we're about to see a whole lot more of Laurie Markkanen in the coming years.